Hello fellow collectors, I hope you're doing very well today. This is a response video to Chris Mohan's recent six films to expand your cinema watching video that he put out just a few days ago. Usually I don't ever do response videos, but it's purely because often it takes me so long to get my thoughts together that by the time I'm ready to make one, everyone has well moved on. But for whatever reason this time, I was able to get my thoughts together a lot quicker than usual and I had a really great time thinking about what films I would choose to recommend for someone just getting into the wider world of cinema and dipping their toe out of just the Hollywood mainstream films. So first up is this film here, The Great White Silence, which is a silent film. And if you've watched my channel before, you might know that this is actually the first silent film that I ever saw and actually to this day remains my favourite, so I ch definitely chose Welp. I remember going into this being more than a little hesitant. Will a silent film really be able to hold my attention for very long? Will it just be painfully boring and slow? Or will I have to read a million slides to know what's going on? Well, I'm delighted to say that as soon as I started watching this, any concerns I had melted away. And not only that, but it quickly became quite clear that this was something of incredible significance and magnitude and really I was riveted to what was going on. It's a documentary before such things even existed yet, made by a man called Herbert Ponting and made between 1910 and 1914 so that's before they started making this before the Titanic was even fully built and it chronicles the tragic attempt of Captain Scott and his crew to try to be the first people to reach the South Pole. It is truly a work of art that is deeply moving and incredibly captivating despite the lack of sound. During the BFI's excellent restoration of this one, they have added a slightly more modern musical soundtrack to accompany it, but it's incredible to think that this was made over a hundred years ago at this point. I've shown this to a few people over the years, none of whom had seen silent films before, and I've never heard anything but glowing praise for it. I think it is a fantastic introduction into the world of silent cinema, and this one is absolutely worth your time. Next, I'd like to recommend a French film by the director Jean-Pierre Melville. I've got a box set of his here. And the film I'd like to recommend is Army of Shadows, which is actually where this front cover artwork is taken from, and I think arguably probably his finest film. It's a film set during World War II, and it's about the French resistance, but what makes this one particularly special is that Melville himself was part of the resistance during the war, and so his intimate and first-hand knowledge is infused into this incredible film that I think, for me, really makes it stand out among others of the genre. This is a very tense watch that will sweep you away up into the story so that you'll forget that you're even reading subtitles. It's a story that really shows instead of tells and I think Melville was a particular master at doing that. His films are rarely overly wordy and so if subtitles are a barrier for you I would highly recommend exploring more of Melville's films. It's at the same time brilliant and devastating You'll be sat on the edge of your seat and at times you'll find yourself holding your breath along with the characters on the screen so as not to make a sound. Fantastically dramatic and thrilling in equal parts and particularly if you are a fan of World War dramas then I highly recommend this one. Then I thought I had to include a South Korean film, as they are producing and have been producing some incredible cinema, particularly over the last two decades. And I think a lot of people would be familiar with Parasite by Bong Joon-ho, which won the Oscar just a couple of years ago. Well, in the end I decided on this one, which is by the other very famous director from South Korea, Park Chan-wook, and it's his most recent film, Decision to Leave. I loved this one when I saw it, and I think it's one of the most beautifully shot films I've ever seen. And I think for those who might be totally unfamiliar with world cinema, watching this would immediately put to rest any of the possible preconceived notions that foreign films are inferior to Hollywood films production-wise, because to say that every frame is a painting is an understatement for this film. This one is almost an erotic thriller, like you might expect from the 80s or the 90s, but kind of without the eroticism. It's a story that revolves around a murder, and a police detective who goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the beautiful, dark and mysterious female suspect. 
It is a captivating and thrilling watch, then another one that just sweeps you away into the story. As you try and figure out what is going on, was she involved or wasn't she involved? At one moment you're 100% certain and at the next moment you don't have a clue. It's a brilliant film that keeps you guessing and just a fantastic watch and a highly recommended one from me if you're looking to get into more South Korean films. Next up is Decalogue, which I still think might be one of the finest cinematic achievements ever accomplished and it was an absolute pleasure to watch. I'll be honest that this one did sit on my shelf for quite a long time because it is 10 one hour short films and I just thought 10 hours is too much. But I think that actually the best way to look at it is like a mini series like we're very used to seeing these days and actually to think of it as 10 one hour episodes which for some baffling reason seems much more easier to manage. It's made by the Polish director Krzysztof Koslowski and each episode or each film is about one of the Ten Commandments. Some are very clear cut and obvious about which one it is, and some will have you guessing and thinking at the end, uh, which one was that one based on? Each film is watchable on its own, they are all self-contained stories, but there are common threads and characters that sort of run and weave their way throughout all ten of these, so it's definitely something that I would recommend watching together though, probably not in the same day unless you have nothing to do for, for a ten hour stretch. There's one of the great extras on this one where I was listening to a critic say that when it was originally released and shown at a film festival, they ended up watching two a night until they had finished. And I think that's a great way to do it. I myself did pretty much exactly the same. Some though, some nights, I'll be honest, I did watch three because it's just so incredibly captivating. You're very excited to get onto the next one. Watching Decalogue is a profoundly moving experience. Really these are ten small stories about our humanity. The Ten Commandments covers such things as murder, envy, lying and theft, all very rich thematically. And Koslowski does, does an excellent job at translating and showing us these things on screen to really get us thinking about who we are. In fact, one of the episodes of Decalogue, I forget which number it is, but actually sparked national debate in Poland at the time, which is really incredible to think of and just a real testament to how incredible this series is. Moving on, and my next suggestion is Police Story, with the options to watch number two and number three if you enjoy the first one. I was really lucky in that I got to see this I think possibly even before I was a teenager, I can't remember exactly when it was, but this was certainly one of my first exposures to world cinema, and it's really held a special place in my heart ever since because I loved it when I saw it then, and when this 4K box set released last year, well I've loved revisiting these even in my 30s. Many of us will be very familiar with Jackie Chan, he's a household name now. He's made some great Hollywood films like Rush Hour, Shanghai Noon or the remake of Around the World in 80 Days. This one is from when he was making films in Hong Kong in the early 80s, but it is infused with all the brilliance, comedy and drama that we have come to expect from a Jackie Chan film. It's aged, I think, like a fine wine. Perhaps with the stunts even more impressive when you watch it today than it was back then because we're just not used to seeing real stuff anymore. You know, if someone falls off a building in a film these days, it's probably a 10 foot drop onto a big cushion on a big soundstage, but when someone falls off a building in Police Story, they really launch themselves off that building and it is incredible to see. Some of these stunts Tom Cruise would be proud of. It's a wonderful watch, funny and excellent in equal measure and definitely one to watch, particularly if you're a fan of Jackie Chan's films already. And lastly, my final recommendation would be this one, La Planet Sauvage or The Fantastic Planet. Lots of people are very into anime these days. Um, I myself haven't dabbled much beyond Akira and a few of the Studio Ghibli films, but it's definitely growing in popularity. And as adult animation continues to gain more of a popularity in our film and TV, I think this one might be an easier sell to someone who might be more familiar with foreign animation already. It's a French film by René Lalo from 1973 and the animation is wonderful. It's incredibly beautiful to look at and really stylistic and tells a really compelling and engaging story. 
The premise, more or less, is what would happen if humans were pets to a much larger and more advanced alien race. Using that premise, for me, I think he starts to look at the themes of, very French themes, the themes of the French Revolution of liberté, égalité and fraternity, liberty, equality and fraternity. And through doing that, he's able to look at other areas such as slavery, cruelty and kindness, animal rights and quite a lot more. It's really a thematically dense piece of work and incredibly interesting, one that really sparks some internal thought and debate. Overall, this is just a really wonderful watch that will definitely stay with you after you've watched it. And I will say that it had an ending that I was not expecting either, which really yeah, made it stay with me a lot longer than I was expecting. And then lastly from me, um, I thought it wouldn't be a list of my recommendations unless I had some honourable mentions. And I just wanted to highlight these three in particular because they were just very important on my own personal cinematic journey. I mean, both uh, the Before Trilogy and Life Aquatic are, you know, kind of made in the Hollywood system and Double Indemnity in the classic Hollywood system. Um, but these were all kind of stepping stones into different types of films. Um, I remember watching Before Sunrise, which is the first of the trilogy, which is probably one of the greatest romantic films ever made about two strangers meeting on a train and then spending the day together in Vienna. Incredibly compelling and a wonderful watch and maybe one that can lead you on to other types of films. Life Aquatic was the first Wes Anderson film that I ever saw and he's much more well known these days. I mean, even when this came out, he was, he was well known enough. But this was my first exposure to him and it just really opened my eyes to the types of films that could be made. I'd never seen anything like it before and it's probably one of the reasons why today The Life Aquatic remains my favourite of Wes Anderson's films, even if some of his other films are probably better, almost definitely better, but this one really holds a special place for me. And lastly, I think probably my entry into film noir, which came close, I came close to putting one on my list, but again, because we're trying to talk about non-Hollywood films, I thought I'll go for something different. But Double Indemnity has kind of opened up my eyes to the world of film noir, which might be something that you've heard of, or maybe you've caught snippets on TV over the years of some of the more famous films. But it's a great stepping stone, again, into a different type of film. And film noir as a genre, particularly from you know the late 40s and the 50s, um, still made in Hollywood, but made with very much smaller budgets, is just a wonderful watch. This one in particular is one of the probably one of the greatest ones ever made. So, yeah, I thought I would just end with just a few of my personal important films on my on my cinematic journey that you might be interested in checking out as well. Well, that's everything from me. I really hope I've been able to give you some recommendations of films you might not have heard of before, or at least spark some interest into exploring some different avenues of cinema. Thanks again to Chris Mohan for putting out his video. Fantastic idea, and I've thoroughly enjoyed thinking what films would I recommend to myself if I was just starting out again. Well, that is everything from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.